Hey, my name is April, and I'm the Peaceful Wife. Today I want to do a bit of a follow-up on my video about biblical submission, which I did a long time ago, because now I understand a little better about how some people may misunderstand this concept in some really dangerous ways, and I want to address that. I want to talk about some things that biblical submission is not. Biblical submission which just means that we're honoring our husband's God-given authority, is not a license for abuse. God does not ever condone sin against anyone, and he does not okay husbands lording any, any kind of power over their wives or mistreating them or being harsh with them. In fact, 1 Peter 3.7 says that if husbands are not considerate in the way they treat their wives and they don't honor their wives, that God will not hear their prayers. Um, so, and abuse, I mean, God doesn't want us to hate each other. He doesn't want us to even sin in our hearts against each other, much less to speak with sin against someone or to hurt them physically. And I have a post on my blog about, um, anger, rage, and violence that you can search at peacefulwife.com, that God doesn't want any of that, any sinful anger, rage, violence, bitterness, hatred, or attempts to hurt somebody else going on in our relationships as believers. And that's for husbands and wives and for all Christians. Biblical submission is also not um, slavery. And I know that the word submission in our culture today does mean slavery. And so it's confusing. And I kind of wish there was a totally different word that we could use because I think it's just, it's got such a negative connotation. But, um, if we can think about, let's just take aside and set aside everything that we think we know about the word submission, and let's just start from scratch and see what does the Bible say about it. What does the Bible say about God-given authority, which um, anyone in a position of God-given authority, like in the government or a pastor or a leader in the church or a parent or a husband or a boss or police officer, anyone in a position of God-given authority is there to do God's will, represents God, is supposed to be taken care of, nurturing, providing for, and protecting those in their care. And Jesus told his disciples that those who have authority are not supposed to lord it over anyone, that they are supposed to be humble and be like servants and make themselves very lowly. And that, it, that being the greatest in the kingdom of Christ is about being the most humble and the most servant-hearted. So our worldly ideas of authority and submission are just not going to fit, and we're going to need to throw those out. Another thing, biblical submission is not. It is not agreement. We do not have to agree with our husbands, and I know there are some who teach that if you submit to your husband, it means you can never disagree with them. But, you know, if God's design was that wives have to agree with their husbands, he would have said, wives must agree with their husbands instead of wives must respect their husbands. And there is a big difference between respect and biblical submission versus agreement. God doesn't ever command us that we have to agree with our husbands. And in fact, if, if we always agreed, it wouldn't really be submission because submission is where I acknowledge that somebody else above me, not in worth or value, but above me in the authority structure, has the ultimate responsibility and authority to make a decision before God and that they will be accountable to God for that decision. So I can present my concerns, requests, perspective, my feelings, my ideas, my, like my needs to my husband or to my boss or to a pastor or whoever is in a position of authority, and then if they disagree with me, then I can cooperate with their leadership, trusting that God will lead me through them, unless they're asking me to sin or condone sin, or if the person in authority is not in their right mind, is drunk or high, or is being violent or extremely abusive and is not safe. There are times when it's just important to get somewhere safe, and there are times when it's not safe to submit to somebody when they're not in their right mind. So, um, but submission is not about agreement. It's not about, well, my husband thinks this, so I have to think this. That's oppressive. And God doesn't cause, I mean, God does not take away the free will of any of us. He gives us all free will. 
We get to decide to choose to obey him and love him or to not obey him. God doesn't give a husband the authority to take away his wife's free will. And he doesn't give a husband the authority to mistreat his wife. In fact, the husband has the greater responsibility of laying down his life, um, of representing Christ and his love for the church, his selflessness, his sacrifice, um, the unconditional love of God and for the church. And he's supposed to approach his position in great humility and he is supposed to be submitting to Christ. The wife also submits to Christ first. Husbands are not the absolute authority. No human is an absolute authority figure. God is the only one that has absolute authority and is the only one we ultimately answer to. So there are times when if someone in a position of human authority, God-given authority, asks us to do something that goes against God's word, you need to go get an abortion, you need to help me kill this person, you need to help me lie on my taxes, you need to help me rob a bank, or you need to go um, hurt this person and shoot them. I mean, if somebody is asking us to sin, like, for instance, when the people that were in Germany during World War I with the Nazis, it, they, would, it, they would have been better to disobey the government in order to obey God to not kill innocent Jews and other people that were being killed. So there are times when we must choose to obey God rather than men. And I have a post on my blog about this called Spiritual Authority that you can search on my blog. And it talks about what is spiritual authority, what is it not, what are the limitations of a person in God-given authority, how is a person supposed to respond to having God-given authority, and how are we to honor those that are in those positions? And what if they ask us to do things that are wrong? How do we respond? Um, it's got a lot of great information that I hope you'll check out. Biblical submission is also not about a wife disrespecting herself or about a wife having less value. Um, we come into marriage as believing women from, from positions of great strength in Christ. We have our identity in Him. Our security is in Him. We are filled with His Spirit. We are co-heirs with Christ and with our husbands. We are of equal value as men in the body of Christ and in our marriages. And we come into marriage as believers full of the Holy Spirit, full of our own gifts and talents God has given us. And we bring all of that into the marriage to bless our husbands and to bless our families and to represent the wife represents the, like the love of the church for Christ. So we represent the respect and honor um, that the church has for Jesus. Of course, our husbands are not deity. They are not Christ, and we are not to put them above Christ in our hearts. That would be idolatry, which would be major sin. So ultimately, we are not seeking to please them, but to see, seek to please God. I can respect myself, God, my husband, and others all at the same time. If I don't respect myself, if I don't receive my identity from Christ, if I don't receive my new self in Christ, then I don't know who I am. And I try to respect my husband without having that foundation in my own life, and I haven't received all that God has for me. Sometimes it can be a very messed up, dysfunctional thing for a wife to try to respect her husband when she doesn't have any respect for herself in a healthy, godly way. So I can and need to respect myself um, as a human being that has great worth in God's sight. And I have a post uh, on the blog and a video about self-respect that if you're struggling with this and you tend to be more passive or too submissive or um, you feel like a doormat, Check out the post about self-respect and the video about self-respect and the comments on the post on my blog about self-respect where Radiant and Redeemed um, in the comments leads people through a prayer, a bunch of prayers for spiritual deliverance from oppression, from thoughts of self-hatred, self-loathing, a refusal of accepting God and a refusal to receive God's love. And um, she goes through a lot of the different lies that we believe sometimes that can be destructive. And I'm going to be sharing some of her comments later as posts in the future on my blog. What I want to see is us to know Christ, to be healed completely ourselves in Christ, 
to know who we are, to have all of the access to what Jesus has given us and to be whole in him, overflowing with him. Then we come into our marriage. Then we're able to properly honor our husband's authority because ultimately we're not trusting our husbands. Ultimately, we're trusting God. So if my husband wants to do something and I disagree, I can share that I disagree. I can share that respectfully. And then unless he's asking me to sin or to condone sin, or to do something that's truly ridiculous that I can't do, like lift a 300 pound couch for him or something like that, then I can intelligently honor his leadership and trust God to work through his decision for my good and my benefit. So ultimately my faith is in God, not in my husband. And when a wife trusts God and trusts God to work through her husband like that and trusts her husband more and more, it motivates husbands to want to be better men, to want to make better decisions, to not want to let their wives down. Now, if there is a husband that's particularly controlling and abusive, then a wife is going to need additional resources to deal with that. And I'm going to be um, sharing a, on the blog and also on the video, Nina Rosner is going to be having an e-course for women about being women of strength and dignity. I believe it'll be later this spring when it when it actually goes live, but that you can sign up for. If you tend to be more of a doormat and you tend to be like the word self-respect just gives you heebie-jeebies and you don't like that idea or you don't feel comfortable with that idea or you don't know how to have respect for yourself, then I think this would be a great opportunity to learn and grow spiritually for yourself and to learn and grow in Christ and then to be able to bring a whole woman who is healed into the marriage and see what God may do. Thank you so much for watching. Again, you can reach me at my blog, peacefulwife.com or peacefulsinglegirl.com. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.